In this video, I'll share with you the tale of a big Kodiak brown bear that lived in my backyard for several winters. Now this is another one of those videos that will be substantially longer than the usual three minutes or so, but I hope you don't mind. This video is brought to you by The Adventures of King Kodiak, a fun and educational children's book series about the biggest bears in the world and the place they call home. Order your copies today at Amazon.com or by visiting the 3 Minutes Outdoors website at 3MinutesOutdoors.com. During my first year living on Kodiak Island, Alaska, I discovered that I had a big Kodiak brown bear living in my backyard during the fall and winter months. As it turned out, he was living there for quite some time before I even knew it. That first year, as the cold autumn months began to set in and winter was rapidly approaching, I made it a regular practice to feed the many birds and squirrels that inhabited the wooded area around the house that I was living in. There was a big homemade bird feeder sitting on an old stump that had been there for decades, left over from the previous residence. And every few days or so, I put out some bird seed, a few pieces of old dried bread, and whatever small bits of scrap food that I had left over from meals. As time went on and the days grew shorter and colder, I noticed that I began having some other guests who came by to investigate my bird feeder including some young black-tailed deer and even a bald eagle on occasion. One particular morning as I went to refill the bird feeder, I found it knocked off the stump and broke into pieces. Now I knew that the birds and the squirrels were not responsible and I seriously doubted if the deer would cause such destruction, so I figured that the bird feeder was destroyed by many of the drunken derelicts that roamed through at night and sometimes vandalized things. And so I sadly retired the remains of the old bird feeder, and that was that. The birds and squirrels would have to look elsewhere for handouts. As the days progressed though, I began to notice more things out of place and disturbed around the woods that surrounded my house. There was also a trail that seemed to be getting a lot more recent use. I naturally figured that it was from the deer that moved into the area for winter, as they often did, or again, maybe the drunken derelicts that were camping out back there on occasion. So, I started keeping a closer eye on things. A few weeks later, I came home from a late dinner with some friends one night, and as I pulled up to the house, I saw a fast, bounding flash of movement around the corner. I knew it wasn't a deer, so I drove down the driveway a little bit, shined my flashlight into the thick brush, and there he was. Back in the woods, about 10 yards or so, was a huge Kodiak brown bear just standing there looking at me with glowing eyes that looked like blue halogen light bulbs. I'll never forget it. I could see the lenses in his eyes focusing and turning around as he just stood there and stared at me. It was wild. I quickly circled back around to the other side of the house, got inside, and turned on all the outside lights. I noticed that there were some state troopers that were driving around the area, so I flagged them down with my flashlight and filled them in on things. As it turned out, they were also looking for that big bear as they were trying to drive him out of town. But he got away. As you would all find out, that bear was an old, crafty, elusive one. The next day I consulted with the biologist from the Alaska Department of Fish and Game who from the tracks judged the bear to be about nine and a half feet in size and probably somewhere around 900 pounds. I also learned that contrary to popular belief, not all bears hibernate in Alaska for the entire winter. On Kodiak Island, for example, while the majority of the bears do sleep throughout most of the peak winter months, there are other restless Bruins that stay awake for all or at least some of that time, depending on the weather and the food availability. The department let me borrow a trail monitoring camera to help keep an eye on the bear's activity, as there was a church and school right next door and safety was, of course, a top priority. Over the days and months that followed, I checked the camera for new photos and constantly monitored the area for fresh bear sign which there was lots of on a very regular basis. The trail camera photos featured here and throughout this video are some of the hundreds of images that I got of that bear. 
That big old Kodiak brown bear was essentially wintering over in my backyard. In fact, he went as far as building a daybed in the thick brush, which kind of looks like a giant bird's nest. And at times, I could even hear him snoring back there. But anytime the authorities came around to send him back into the wilderness where he belonged, he vanished. He was very elusive during daylight hours and would lay low in hiding. However, when the sun went down, he would go on the prowl. Now he had no interest in humans, thankfully, and he avoided people at all costs. Instead, he would roam the nearby streets looking for his delectable meal of choice, which was used baby diapers and beer. Yes indeed, he was a helpless street bear, addicted to food waste, who filled diapers, and most importantly, the beer that the local street people hid in the woods around my house. In fact, that bear went as far as making a dirty diaper and beer food cache. Just as when bears kill and eat part of a prey animal in the wild and then bury the rest of the meat for later, this bear did the same thing with the garbage and booze that he rounded up from the neighborhood. One day I found a freshly dug, partially buried pile of both diapers and dozens of empty beer cans with gigantic canine teeth tears in the aluminum. The only exception to his rather strange diet was a cat that he ate one evening and possibly a deer, as seen here in the bear's mouth. A different bear might have been responsible for the deer though, as this trail camera photo was taken at a neighboring property a good distance away. At night, the big Kodiak bear would roam around my house and would even take little bear naps right on my front porch, as I discovered from all the fresh bear tracks and bedding imprints that he'd leave in the snow around my house and in the yard. I encountered my big furry friend quite a few times at night, but I only saw him once during daylight hours. On that occasion, he apparently raided the dumpster of a nearby restaurant, he then headed right out into lunch hour traffic, and then made a mad dash for his protective sanctuary in my backyard woods. Multiple witnesses called in the event to local authorities, and within just a few minutes, my house and yard were completely surrounded by Alaska Fish and Game personnel, state troopers, and local police. As they were all closing in, I was sure that my backyard bear buddy was about to meet his demise. But to everyone's surprise, he simply vanished into thin air. That 900 pound beast was nowhere to be found. He eluded his pursuers in broad daylight. Ah yes, he was a crafty one. He had a network of rather secret travel routes that he would follow when pressured too much that would lead him out of town to the more remote outskirts where he belonged. But when the smoke cleared, he'd head right back to town to feast on dirty diapers and beer once again. Now naturally, safety is the top priority in such a situation, but I have to admit that I didn't mind the old backyard bear too much. He never really caused any trouble or bothered people other than stealing their beer or eating trash. But of course, once a bear associates human trash with food, things can, and sometimes do, escalate into very dangerous situations. That big Kodiak bear came around in the same manner in the years that followed. He was an old bear in his last chapter of life, and as many trash bears do, he most likely took to the streets and ventured into civilization for an easier existence than what he experienced in the wild. I don't know what became of that bear in the end, Many rumors circulated about him, but he eventually disappeared. This final photo of his track frozen in the ice of my driveway is one of my most memorable reminders of my big backyard bear. I think of it as his signature upon a most fond series of memories from my first years living in Alaska. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to this channel and check out the 3 Minutes Outdoors website at 3minutesoutdoors.com. And finally, if you'd like to support this channel, click on the link in the video description below to find out more.